I made this blue one and I thought, oh, I don't really like the red one. And now that I've made this, I like this more. It's like bright, colorful. I like this actually. Welcome to another DIY with me, Tanaka Lili. Thanks for joining me. My apologies, it has taken me forever to come back. I am in recovery mode. As you can see, my face is very, like, it's, <laughs> it looks like a, oh, I don't want to say something that's going to come back and bite me. But anyway, my face is very pale. I'm not too sure exactly what it is, but um, I've literally have to put color mine lotion on my skin nearly every day, including my face, especially my arms and my back. And I've gone to the doctors a couple of times. I got a vaccination that's not COVID related. Um, and I personally think I'm reacting to the jab because I react to everything, but the doctor says it's not the vaccination. So I'm not too sure what it is. It was a bit stressful. I could not do a lot of things. I could not film myself. I could not do, I was just basically, I was just, yeah, bored. So today I'm going to do another necklace tutorial because I got a lot of questions regarding how to make this necklace and I actually didn't realize that I did not clearly show what I was doing. So one of the comments on YouTube was, um, you're not showing where you are inserting or actually you're not showing us how you're doing it um, or what's going on. So my apologies if that's how you felt. I'm hopefully today going to show you step by step how to make this. I'm actually thinking it might be easier for me to show you using bigger beads like this, this size of beads, but at the moment I can't get the beads. So um. I'm just using what I can. So another comment was, how do you determine where to start when making a loop? So this is my necklace I'm going to show you now. What I do is I make the first line, the first line, which is this darker blue line. And then I measure around my neck like this. So you see, it comes all the way to where my neck, I'm not sure if you can see, it comes all the way to where my neck ends because I want this to droop all the way to the back if you don't have enough beads and you don't want it to go all the way you can even stop here and then start your loops from here um but because i want this to be a full necklace let me show you at the front so i'm going to put it at the back and show you how so you see like that that is exactly neck to neck and so i just put these loops the first loop is very close that's because I don't want this to be a choker. I don't want this to choke my neck. So when I loop the first loop, it gives me a bit of room, you see, like that. And if I want it to be a bit lower, I can go into the second loop, like that. Or if my sister or my cousin, who has um, a thicker neck than me, wants to borrow it, they can borrow it. Or if for some reason I want it to be very loose, I can go to the third loop, like that. So. That's how I determine where to put the loop. Um, that's why I didn't tell you the count. I didn't want to tell you the count of the beads along here because it all depends on your neck. I have, I have in the past done necklaces that were like that from here to here because I didn't have enough beads, but I was trying to make this as full as possible. So another question that I'll answer while I have this necklace on is how do you determine what a row is? So when I'm talking about rows, these are rows. So just, just as in seating, a row goes like this. So this is when I'm talking about the rows, these are the rows. So they go across. And when you see this necklace, you actually think that I'm beading it like this, going this way. No. So I actually, and this is my technique. I bead like this. I bead going down and then coming back up, going down, coming back up, going down, coming back. This is the easiest way. Trust me. I'm just going to give you a tip. This is the easiest way. So if you start, I, I normally start on one end and then I go down. And that's how I that's how I was counting how many rows I will have. So I'm gonna bring my camera close and I'll show you so I will so that it's clear. So if I hold it like this and if I say I bid going down, my rows my rows will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So this necklace has 13 rows and the rows are these ones. So you can see the first row, it has the really light blue color. The second row has a translucent blue color. The third row has a medium blue color. 
the fourth row is going back to the same color light blue translucent medium blue light blue translucent medium blue so that's the first row there that's the second row the first and the second row are together in the diamond see the first and the second row the third and the fourth row are together but when you look at them like that they are separated by these things in the middle so hopefully that <laughs> hopefully that explains the rows and the columns and another thing i was going to explain which i'm not too sure if i explained it properly in my last video when you do your rows you need to have odd numbers you cannot make this necklace with even rows i hope this makes sense i hope i am explaining it properly it has 13 rows and today i'm going to make a rainbow necklace and hopefully that will clarify a lot of things because i was not going to repeat any colors but i might repeat three colors um i'm still deciding but let's just get into the video once i start beading hopefully it will make sense so to start off i wanted to show you how my beads come so my beads come on this little thing and it has like strings so it's bare string and so i just simply empty my beads into these cuphead containers just because it's easier to maintain and also the colors are separate These are my colors one two three four five six seven eight so i can't make this with eight to add these three so that i have 11 rows um yay so we're starting from here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven rows um and i'm going to just put this on the side and i'll use it to explain another thing that i didn't show you in my last video was how to add this thread when you run out it's quite um, simple i like this um thread because it's very hard to cut it's very hard to cut with a pair of scissors which guarantees you that it's very hard to break so to start beading i'm going to put my needle through this orange bead and I start off with a bigger bead, so it's a bit bigger than my normal beads. And I'm going to pull my thread all the way until I have a small piece of string about this size left. And so next I will load my beads. So I'll load six beads onto my needle. And then I will double check how many they are, two, four, six. Once I'm happy, I am going to thread the beads around that little orange bead. So this orange bead is going to hold my necklace together and so I just put my finger and then I put my needle so the thread is coming out this way and then it's going to go in the other way. So I'm just wrapping the six beads around the orange bead. So you're going to notice throughout this beading that I like to pull my, my thread so that the tension is firm and then I'm going to load six more beads and I'll do the same process. So I'm going to do this six times. So now I've finished putting the six beads of six around this orange bead. I'm going to go in these gaps that you are seeing here and I'm going to put five beads. So all I'm doing is putting five beads on my thread and then I'm going to put them around the orange bead just like I did with the six beads and then it's going to cover in between the gaps.
so I finally am finished this is my last one and I put five sets of five to make this a round ball and it's covering the main orange bead so this will be my bead that's going to hold the whole necklace together these beads are slightly bigger than these so if you notice this ball is a bit bigger but it's not that much different and then I'm gonna start making this line and where I've got this ball on this one I'm not going to put this loops because I don't really need them I only need the loops on one side so I can hold my necklace together So all I'm doing now is I'm just putting as many glue beads as I can. And I like these cupcake holders because they're quite easy to just get load beads with. Okay. So normally I like to write on paper so that I plan how much beads I'm going to have. But because I already have this and it's exactly the right shape and size for my neck, I'm just going to go by ear and follow what I already have. Okay. So I'm also, because I'm worried I might not have enough beads, I'm also going to stop here. I'm not going to do this third loop because I honestly I don't really need it. And so my necklace is going to start somewhere there and then this part here, this is going to be the loop. So I need to count how many, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So there's 28, 28 divided by 2, that's 14. So I need to put 14 beads. And so how I make the loop is I counted my 14 beads. So these are these are 28 beads and these are my 14 beads. That's where it's going to come back like this. So I have to count 14, 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So they I might just add maybe two more, three more, 14. And so my first loop is going to come through here. And I have to pull the thread very tightly so there's no gap. So when you're beading, you need to make sure there's no gaps in the thread like that. There's no thread um, being seen through your beads. And then I'm going to load 14 more. Two more, 13, 14, and I'm going to count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 here. So that's where my second loop will be. So I am putting this through the, four, the 15th bead. Like that. And then I need to pull it a little bit and make sure it's pulled and there's no gaps showing. Like that and so now i'm going to start bringing my necklace i'm going to start bringing my necklace down so i'm going to start beading down like that so i'm going to start so normally i draft on paper how many beads i'm going to put but i'm, I'm starting with two two three so two two three and in between the colors i have to put the separating color which is white so i'm going to go two of the dark blue and then I'll put a uh, white bead and then two of the yellow beads and then I'll put a white and then I'm going to go three and then I'm going to put white and then so three 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 And then I'm going to put white and then 
Ну, три, три, ого, о. I will mention this. Only when you're doing this part, do you put white after every color change. So that means you're putting white to divide every row. It's only this part when you do that. Like that. I put the white and then I'm going to do four again on the middle. And then I'm going to put white. And then I'm going up for five. I'm gonna put white I'm hoping this way it will be easy to explain because the colors are all different um, so that's five two two three three four four five five Instead of putting seven again, I might put eight. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and explain so that everyone understands. So this is how I make my necklace. I know people do it differently. Some people do it that way. I find this to be the easiest way for me. This is how I do it. So I start with this end. Okay, let me hold it the same way. I start with this end and then I bid going back up. Here I've got two blue, white, two yellow, white, three orange, white, three green, white, four blue, white, four maroon, white, four of the bottle green, white, two, four, five of the red, white, two, four, six of the blue, white, two, four, six, seven of the yellow, white, two, four, six, eight of the orange. So these are going to determine my row. So this will be a row, 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 this will be a row. Just like here, this is a row, this is a row, this is a row. But with my row, this one and this one are going to make a diamond. Like that. Yeah? Hopefully you're following. And so at the end of mine, I like to make this little design. It looks like a star. And I do it by putting four beads of my ending color. So I put four. One, two, three, four. And then I push them through. You can see my four beads. So one, two, three, four. And I am going to take my needle and it's going to go back through the first one. So it's bead number one. So one, two, three, four. Bead number one. My needle is going to come back out through that one. And when I pull, it's going to make a little cross, like that. Push this up a little, like that. And I try and always pull my beads when I'm bidding, so the tension is good. So now we're going to go back up. I'm going to be going back up. So the exact same number, and this is why you need odd numbers. So I've got one row, two rows, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If I have ten rows, when you come up 
it won't match. It will be uneven. So you need an even odd number so that it's even. That's very weird. But <laughs> So we're starting off with our orange beads. And if you forget, just count how many. So two, four, six, eight. So I'm going to do the same eight beads. Two, four, six, seven, one more, eight. And naturally, I just like to continue because I know what I'm doing. But because I'm explaining, I have to do it step by step. So because this is going to form our first diamond, I need to put a white bead to separate the orange and the yellow. And then, so for yellow, I have seven. that so you can see I have my, my, my necklace this is the end it's going to just stay like that when I put two four two four six seven instead of adding another white bead I am going to go through the white bead that's already here so I'm going to bid through this white bead see what I'm doing take my needle I'm beading it through this white bead that's already there and when I pull, I want to make sure that the tension is really well pulled. Yeah? Okay. So this one is our first diamond. Just like here. This It's like that one. The first diamond. Yeah? And then, because I have blue here, two, four, six, I'm going to put six blue. And... I'm just going to pull it through, so you see. So I've got my next blue here. I can't put it through here because that won't be a diamond. So I have to put a white bead in between the blue and the red. So white bead. And then I'm going to go in for five red. Like that. And then this, because I now have my first diamond, this one is going to go through this one. So my needle is going to go through this one, pull it through the other side, like that. And that's my second diamond. So this is one row, this is one row, this is one row, this is one row. And next is five green. And then I'm going to put the white one. And I'm going to put four red and blue or maroon one two three four so like that and then here we are going to bid through this white bead like that like that and then we're gonna go into the dark blue And then this, my needle is going to go through this white bead here, like that. And I'm going to pull and pull and pull until the tension is firm. And then we're going to go to orange, three orange. And then one white, two yellow, and two, and that's it. And then it's going to go through this white one. Like that. Now I just need to put the last two of the dark blue beads. One, two. And then I'm going to just put them through all the way and I explain what happens here. So with these two, they're going to join onto our main necklace and i always like to count three beads in the middle so from this bead where it's starting this is where my my beads started going down one 
two, three, I count three, on the fourth beat, I'm going to beat this three. Okay, let's have a look. And it's out of frame again. So here, going up, count one, two, three, and then it goes down. So from here, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do exactly what we did on the first row, but instead of adding white everywhere, we will be joining it into this white that's here. So the first blue is gonna go two blue beads. One, two. And then I'm going to put a white bead. And then two yellow. One, two. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And then after the yellow, because there's already a white here. So the first row, that's the hardest one because you have to remember to put white everywhere. Once you come up and you're coming down, it's easy to see if you make a mistake because after my yellow, there's already a white before the orange. So I know that's where my needle is going to go through that white bead. Okay, I don't want to cover. So my needle is going to go through like that. And we're going down. So I'm going to pull the thread. Like that. Then we're going to go three orange. One white. Three lime green. And then I know to stop because before the green and the blue, there's a white bead, which means I have to connect this um, column onto this white bead. Okay. Once you get this, the rest is just so simple. And then pull the three one. One white, pull my ring. One, two, three, four. And then I know to stop because after that maroon on the other side, there's a white bead. I connect my needle through that white bead. Like that. Pull my tension. I'm going to go five green. Connect it. My needle goes through. It's easy if you hold it like that. Okay. Okay. And then we have to do the blue. So I'm gonna go through like that. My needle through that lonely bead, and then I'm gonna pull and pull and pull and make sure I pull and get enough tension. On the first bead. I'm going to get these three to come a bit here. On the first bead, that's where I'll go back in with my needle. And that's going to give us that cross. And then I like to just fidget and fix the beads at the end so it looks like a nice cross. down and then I'm going to thread it my needle through the lonely white bead and here especially at the end you need to make sure your tension is tight otherwise you won't get that nice star effect here like that 
So you can see I already have my diamond forming. And then I'm going to do the same. Slowly. Slowly. And then my two beads. One, two, one, two, three. So from the one that I put, one, two, three. And then on the fourth one, the same, I'm going to put my bead through like that. And then I pull. I do this. So that's basically how the beading goes. On my way down I'll just do exactly the same so the only difference is when I'm going down my needle is facing down like now my needle is facing down because I'm going back down and then when I'm coming back up it will be facing up so when I'm beating I put my needle through the white going down when I'm going down and then on the other side when I'm going up in a few minutes my needle will be facing up so that's just the basic way see now my needle is facing up that's the only trick you need to remember and that's it that's the basic way of how i do my beading so this necklace is worn in southern africa actually i think a few countries wear this necklace in africa in my last video i named it a zulu necklace but it's actually also worn in zimbabwe uh, by ndebele women um, and I've seen other women from Tanzania and other countries. I've seen them wearing a similar type necklace with the same design. If you do decide to do this necklace and you're successful please let me know um, or if you want me to do another video explaining with bigger beads I'll try and find the beads this week and I will upload the video next week and let me know how successful you were if you find this technique helpful or easy um, or if you have any other questions please leave them in the comment section below Now I'm going to show you what I do when I'm running out of thread. Remember where our last point is. So I take my needle and I go down one of the rows. So I, I go down blue and then I'm going down the yellow. And then I'm going to come up that yellow part. Go down again that yellow. 
zigzag part so I went like this and then I'm gonna go up that yellow part and then I'm gonna go down again so all I'm doing is making sure I'm threading it through all the beads and then when I get to this point where there's orange I am going to tie a knot and so I turn my thread around through and then I pull it so it's actually a knot um, and the knot is in between the beads so not on top of the beads and then now I'm going up that orange through that white bead and then up that yellow going back where I came from up that yellow and then down that yellow down the orange and then so I went this way tied the knot up down down and then I'm gonna tie my final knot knot here and then I'm going to cut the thread so because our thread ended here see the diamond the next diamond should come here you need to know exactly where it ended so I ended on the red so I need to start back here so I'm gonna take my thread and this thread that I'm putting is going to finish off the rest of the necklace To add the new thread, I do that by tying a knot on the bottom. So if you realize something, I prefer adding and finishing off my thread on this bottom star part because it is quite busy at that area and it's clunky so no one will see if you add any thread or if you cut any thread because it already looks bulky or clunky. So I just cut off any excess that I don't need. And then I'm going to beat going up in that direction and then coming down until I come back to where I last finished off. I will mention this. It is pretty annoying to use a very long piece of thread when you're filming because it looks really weird for me to keep pulling the thread. But in actual fact, the longer the thread, the more secure your necklace is for example if you're tying a lot of new threads your necklace is bound to untangle or unravel or the beads might fall out it, especially if you don't tie your knots and or if if it comes apart or if it's loose that's why a lot of people that do beading they use three or four threads to make their necklace in case if one of the thread breaks at least there's other threads that are still holding the necklace i only use one thread and I normally put a long piece of thread so that I avoid tying new threads. And now you can see clearly the rows. The first row is the blue one, the second row is the yellow, third row is orange, fourth row is green, fifth row is dark blue, maroon or burgundy green red blue yellow and orange so these are the rows and that's why i always start with the end because it determines my rows so hopefully this is straightforward i'm going to continue beating i might finish this off tomorrow So finally I'm finishing off and this is my last two beads. I've counted the three beads and I'm just going to put my needle back that way because I need to go back through to finish off and cut the thread. 
so I'm gonna start putting my needle through it always goes through where it is first you don't skip a bead because you don't want the thread to show outside the bead and then I start going through that part and then next I go down along the beads and I'm just gonna go in any direction and then once I've decided I've gone down enough and my thread has um, is going down the green beads I tie my first knot there where the green beads are and then I'll go down the blue and maroon And then I'll keep going down that green and the red and I come out after the white bead and then I'm going to tie another knot here and as you can see I still have quite and I'm just laying it out so you can see I started off here went down tied a knot came up tied another knot and now I'm here I'm tying a third knot and then I'm going to go down baby don't worry you are my only you won't be lonely and I'm tying another knot here and then I'm ready to cut I don't usually like cutting in the middle of my necklace I like cutting it at the end but here I cut it in the middle and that's it that's it All that's left is remember our piece of thread at the beginning when we did that bubble we're just gonna thread it through the beads knitting it until it's covered so I'm just threading through anyhow um, through the beads and I'm just doing it haphazardly this is so that it won't unravel and I'm coming to the other side of the ball now and I'm gonna go down my string bead towards the necklace and I'm gonna start going in through my necklace any direction and because my thread is running out I'm going to tie my knot I'm, I'm going to tie my knot somewhere here and I'm gonna cut it and that's it all done and I'm putting my other blue necklace next to this one so you can see they look almost similar in length even though the blue is slightly longer so it's a little bit longer this one is slightly shorter so finally I finished the necklace and so oh my god I'm still I'm still not feeling too well I didn't even comb my hair today because it's just one of those lazy days so forgive me for that so finally I finished the necklace and this is what it looks like and as I mentioned these beads were smaller so this was I don't remember the size I'll put it up here it was they were smaller and these beads are actually bigger when I hold them together this one actually weighs more it's more heavier than this this is quite light I really like this blue <laughs> the blue one because I wear it with my light pale blue jeans and it really it looks it looks really good um, but I'm also falling in love with this colorful one so this is what it looks like they look exactly this well the size looks exactly the same um, but I've used less beads on this one so when I wear it it will almost be the same so have a look I might actually just move this microphone I might move this microphone to the side hopefully you can still hear me so and I'll just pull my top up so that this can go on top like that so this is what it looks like it's a colorful well actually I'm not mad it looks good I don't know if I still like the blue one better hmm what do you guys think do you think the blue one is nice or now this looks nicer uh, I struggle every time I make necklaces I feel like I made the red one and then I thought that was the best it was small and then I made the blue one and I gave away the red one because I actually never wore it I just wore it on video to show you and then I made this blue one and I thought oh I don't really like the red one and now that I've made this I like this more it's like bright colorful um, I'll turn around so that's why I removed the microphone so that you can really see 
So if you want, you can finish it off here, but I don't like finishing it off here because it starts falling in the face. So when it's a full necklace like that, you know you're safe wherever you go. You don't have to fix anything. I like this actually, but I'm gonna make another one. So I'm gonna, I might give this one away. I'm gonna make another one for me and I might add two more levels because I don't like how it's coming into my top. So I want it to go over because normally I wear my necklaces with like singlets or whatever they tank tops, whatever they call this spaghetti tops. I normally wear it with something like that. And wow, the yellow makes it look makes it look nice and bright. And I really like it. I really like it. Since I have so many beads left over, I'm just gonna say this is a gift for someone or I might sell it. Tell me if you were to buy my necklaces, how much would you pay? Because I'm thinking of doing an Etsy account um to sell beads as well as my other merch. How much would I sell this for? Um, so basically this takes me about three hours if I just do it non-stop. When I'm focusing, I'm zoning and I just work on this. It will take me three hours. It will take me three hours. Um, but because I started this yesterday and I wasn't feeling too well, and then I went to sleep, it's taken me, I think it's taken me four, 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 four and a half hours. So how much would you pay for about four and a half hours worth of labor? The beads are not, they're not that expensive considering I can make two or three necklaces out of it. Um, and if you're really looking to try something, if you're really looking to try making a beaded necklace like this, I would advise you to go with the big beads. If you go with big beads, it's quicker and you learn. And once you've mastered the basics, it's easy for you to just do it again and then go smaller, go smaller. I like this, this part, the beginning part, the color combination is really nice. Um, might change this maroon and the dark blue. I don't really like that. But I really like the colors. Yay. Can you let me know what you think or what you like about this necklace? And thank you so much for all your questions. Thank you so much for those that have subscribed to my channel. I, I do promise I'll be bringing more beading styles and more hairstyles. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section. If you have a comment, if I didn't explain it as clearly as you would like, also let me know and I'll try and do better. I really like this. In my next video, I'm going to show you when how I would have made mine that's going to be maybe up to here so I'm gonna add two more levels to this so that it's bigger and it doesn't go in my bra like it's in my top yeah but people like things differently some people like short necklaces some people like long necklaces so it's basically up to you and someone was asking me not on YouTube but someone on my Facebook was asking me how I know how to decrease the number i just start with two so the first line with the blue i start with two and then i maintain two because i don't want like i don't want it to start like a fitted necklace and then all of a sudden it's loose i want it to gradually increase in size so i start with two two and then i go three three four four and then after four it's up to you i normally go four four five five and then six i did six on this one and then seven and eight so um looks good um if i'm gonna do this again i might do two two three three four four five five and then i might do six six and then seven seven and then eight eight yeah and it will be slightly up to there it'll be slightly bigger than this so thank you once again for staying to the end if you like this video subscribe turn on your notification give this video a thumbs up thank you bye <laughs>